Okay, so this is uh, going to be a pretty useful video, I think, for uh, many of the people that want to show or hide fields dynamically using Suite CRM. So there's um, some built-in functionality like the dynamic dropdowns, which I personally couldn't um, get to work, which I'm assuming will show the dif different dropdown choices depending on the drop dropdown choices previously selected. So I guess if you select one dropdown, it's going to show another dropdown, um, etc. But as with some of the elements with Sweet CRM, I just noticed that uh, straight up uh, plain vanilla JavaScript is oftentimes better than to mess with the built-in uh, quote-unquote uh, JavaScript functions, which are invoked through the use of the framework. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing JavaScript. So the first thing that you need to do to get this set up, uh, you need to go to the broker, I mean the broker, the custom module, in this case, it's uh, external broker commissions. There you're going to create a view and you're going to extend a view. So in this case, it's a, a default edit view that I'm extending. If you need to create a custom edit view, there's actually a video that explains how to set that up. Uh, but this is to give you a general idea of how you would proceed when you want to integrate this. The final goal here is we have these drop downs here. So basically we select either the amount here, we select the arrangement. As you can see, a lot of stuff is uh, jumping on the screen when this is, uh, this is happening. And uh, oftentimes, as is the case, is depending on the radio button that's selected, the choices are going to be uh, replaced here, right? <clears throat> so the first thing that we'll do is we'll extend the edit view as mentioned before. The way that you would do it is you would uh, most, most often as the case is you would do the class and then put the name of the module, view edit, and then you extend the default edit view. So if your class has a custom edit view, then you need to extend that class's uh, custom edit view. There is a separate video on how to extend, but just uh, generally speaking, that's how it will be done. In most cases, you're just going to be extending the default edit view. Then we're going to be extending the, the display method. So the display method is, uh, ex uh, is extended like so, public function. Then in the end, we're going to call the parent class. So all of the stuff in between here, this is going to be our custom JavaScript. And it's a bit complicated, but in my case, the setup is complicated. In your case, it may be a lot more uh, simple. <clears throat> but it will give you a general idea of how to proceed. So when we're writing the JavaScript, this is this is going to be the... So we're using the here doc syntax, as you can see here, with this uh, EOT. And then uh, the JavaScript, we use the window.onload function. So basically wait for the window to load before proceeding with the JavaScript. And the general idea here in this case, what I'm doing is basically I'm setting up uh, the initial flags for the payment type and the payment setup. And that's what you'll want to do in the beginning is you want to declare them as null. So basically means that this is not checked and this is not checked. And then we're going to test this assumption that they're not checked. Then the next thing is to do the query selector all. And uh, this is the... the, the the best way that I could find with the with the way that the HTML is created in Sweet CRM for the radio enums is that there is not a lot of unique identifiers, so you need to iterate through all of them, basically by doing the select query all. So when we're doing it this way, so when we say uh, query selector all type radio enum, what we're basically telling Sweet CRM is get me this and get me this. So get me all the radio enums. So then we proceed, we basically tell Sweet CRM, okay, so now go through all of these radio enums. Go through this one and then go through this one. <clears throat> so the first thing that I wanna do is I want to check, um, and this is where I'll end the example, so we're not going to use all of the code here, it's just to get you started, is we're going to say that, uh, we're gonna tell the system basically, we wanna get the payment type radios. So I just wanna get this, and this, I don't care about this for now. Okay, so just get me this and this. 
And the way that I do it is I also use the query selector all, but this time I do it on the element. So we're doing the iteration through the uh, different radio enums. Each one is with the for each function. This is an anonymous for each function. We're going to call, um, we're going to be working on the element. So each item here is going to be the element. So I'm telling it, okay, uh, get me the query selector all, get me all of the ones that have the ID type, uh, the ID with type underscore C. So as you can see here in the markup, it's going to be filled with the, uh, here with the ID type C. So it's going to get just these guys here. Okay, long way explaining it, but just to make sure that you get it. <clears throat> and then we're going to be iterating through all of these guys here individually. So from uh, through this one and through this one. What we're doing is basically we're checking with the on click function. So we're essentially doing like an event listener almost. We're saying that as soon as a click happens on either this one or on this one, then I want you to proceed with the toggle setup function and the toggle payment amounts. We'll ignore this for now. This is overly complicated, but we'll just use this one as an example, the toggle setup going to go to this function here <clears throat> and what you're doing basically with the toggle setup here I'm going to say what is the payment type and what is the uh, what is the payment type is it either amount or percentage so I'm telling the system check if it's either amount or percentage this payment type was defined here so if we go back to this function here what we're doing is we're checking for the for each of the elements Here, when an on click happens, we declare the payment type by looking at the element value. So we're telling the system, hey, JavaScript, what is the value of this here that was just clicked, right? And it's going to put the value of this, basically whatever the value uh, is for this one. In this case, it's going to be amount here, what, what, what is contained in the value field here. It's going to put it in the payment type. So when we go to the toggle, uh, toggle setup, we can basically say, okay, if it's either this or this, so it's like my way of doing it, I basically say if it's this one is clicked or this one is clicked, I'm sure there's a more elegant way to check. Then we want to display it. So the way that we display it is, <clears throat> I'll show you first how we hide it. So the way that we would hide it is we would get the parent node. And to get the parent node of this field here, so the parent node basically being, okay, so we're inside... We're inside here, right? The parent node of this one is going to be this container here. So essentially I'm here and I wanna get this parent node. So I'm telling it <coughs> query selector, we use whatever the div we, we're dealing with right now, label arrangement in this case, <coughs> because that's the label that it has, the data label we can see we can see basically here data label label arrangement <clears throat> get me the parent node so that's the syntax that you're going to use here we're getting the parent node right and then we're saying for the parent node style display none so we want to hide it basically this is the way that you would hide it and the way that you would show it is that this instead of being none it's going to be nothing zilch nada here right so that's the toggle setup. So we're basically telling the system, hey, if the payment type is amount or the payment type is percentage, something was clicked, then I want you to show this. This is the way that the toggling basically works. This or this. So if we refresh, nothing is shown. Click, it's shown. So now if we go back to our original piece of code where we left off, we're basically going through the toggle setup Never mind this part here, that doesn't matter, that's just to show more fields. This is what happens on click. If the element is checked, so we basically, for example, we save this page and we land on this page, page and this is already checked, we still wanna show this field here. So the way that we do it is we check. If the element is checked, the payment type is going to be the value of whatever it is that is checked here. And I want you to do the toggle setup. I want you to go ahead and check uh, if we need to show this guy here or not. And that's basically it. It's not, 
it's not too complicated. Once you're done with the loop, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to run the toggle setup once. So when the page originally loads, so when the page is just first started up, you want to go ahead and go through that verification. You want to make sure that if something is checked here already, then that you're showing this field. That's why you're going to run the toggle payment, I mean the toggle setup once outside the loop. Then we're going to close up the script. We're going to echo our JavaScript. So that's very important is that you echo whatever it is that you created here. And then you're going to call the parent display. What I'll do is I'll copy this whole setup here. I'll paste it um, and I'll provide a link in the description. So like that, you can basically use this as a, as a template. And you can also use this approach for your, uh, uh, for your other fields verification validation schemes and um, actually what I'll do is I'll create a part two of this video so this is going to be more complicated when we're going to be showing or hiding multiple fields at the same time in this case as you can see it's just one uh, sort of container that we're hiding or showing but what happens if you have multiple ones so I'll do that in another video which is more complex and not a lot of people will need it uh, but watch out for that video. If you found this video at all helpful, please leave a like like that. I see that people find it useful and subscribe because more of these will be made in the future. Thank you so much.